This is a very brief follow-up video to the last video I posted and in that video I was um, working on a Z80 based computer system and the purpose of the particular video series is to demonstrate what it was like to go about designing a computer back when the Z80 was first released. So in its early days, sort of 1980 onwards, uh, there were many, many computers built around the Z80. And rather than dropping in the large scale support devices that were available as part of the Z80 development, uh, I'm sticking to uh, discrete design as much as possible. Now I have explained why I'm doing that, but I thought what I'd do is uh, respond to a comment I got on the previous video and also use it to try to get across the purpose of the project for it. And to those of you that um, know what the project's all about, you probably want to skip this video. It's just really to try to underline the entire purpose of the video project. Um, I'm writing a book at the same time, so that goes into far more detail than I can possibly go into on the videos. And one thing, if you make YouTube videos, you know it's quite difficult sometimes to keep things on topic. So as much as I can, I try to keep videos focused on a particular part of what I'm talking about. Uh, otherwise, they kind of go off at a tangent and you never end up um, making clear what you're trying to get across. So the project is about how to design a computer. It's not um, about designing a specific computer. It's really meant to try to show how the circuits worked, how to go about designing them. And it'd be a starting point for anyone wanting to build their own. And I've kind of stated this quite a few times, but I thought if I make a specific video like this, then I can just direct anyone that has a question in the future to it. So the project is designing a Z80 based computer system using discrete logic and avoiding any large scale devices. Uh, and by doing that I can hopefully explain the inner workings. That's not to say that the circuits will mimic or duplicate the entire functionality. So in the previous video I was showing how to make an RS232 module. Uh, but I did specifically say that we were not going to mimic an entire UART. And um, I got this uh, comment and I thought I'd go through it point by point. Now, I'm not trying to pick on anyone here, this is just um, because there were so many things in here that I thought were kind of wrong and, and kind of completely missed the, the point with regard to this uh, project, it would be quite useful so I could use this to try and indicate what the entire project is for. And the first uh, comment on here is that um, one thing that isn't quite uh, the red uh, is my responses to the, uh, the comment. Uh, one thing that isn't quite period is that a computer of the time would have to support old school mechanical teleprinters completely wrong, that's uh, absolutely wrong. Uh, the vast majority of Z80 based small computers did not support the old mechanical teleprinters. And I worked on literally thousands of Z80 based computers of this period and almost none of them support mechanical teleprinters. In fact the vast majority of them don't even have RS232 ports. I think um, the, the comment I might have there, the, um, the era mixed up, I think he's talking about 10 years prior to to where uh, our project is. So the uh, next part of the comment, um, so would need a separate divider for 110 board and the capability to transmit with two stop bits instead of one. Completely relevant, that's um, again wrong, that's the vast majority of the Z80 based uh, computers of this era did not need to support this. It's not to say you couldn't include that and in the project um, trying to get across that you can design into it whatever support you want and as I said in the previous video the circuit will work with whatever division frequency or ratio you want it's entirely up to you what you build in so I'm not even really sure why this uh, comment was made. Uh, in terms of the number of stop bits again I specifically made it clear in the video that uh, these stop bits were there for a purpose to deal with mechanical printers and they were a, a carryover from the original purpose of the RS232 protocol. I made that clear in the video. 
and so we don't need them because that's not what we're going to be doing. If that is something you want to do with the computer that you build, just build it in uh, at that division ratio. Um, but that's got nothing to do whatsoever with the validity of the design we're looking at and the mythology. I'm talking here about the mythology of design. And if your module needs 110 board, then build 110 board into it. Uh, next point. Uh, some systems uh, also implemented 50, 75, 100 board. Yes, uh, I think we, mo we, we mostly all know that. Um, but um, again, some may have done, but absolutely certainly not all Z80 based machines designed in the 1980s supported this at all, let alone this range of board rates. So again, completely relevant and has got absolutely nothing to do with our project. Uh, Remember, what we're trying to do here is design a Z80 based machine in a similar way to the way a machine would be designed in the 1980s, except that we're not using the large scale integration devices. Uh, next point um, he made, uh, one reason that UARTs were so popular is that the board space, hole marking, etc. didn't require a lot of ICs. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. I've specifically said that I'm doing things the hard way. It's obvious uh, that if you get a large scale integration device, that they say board space, that's the entire purpose of them. It's why microprocessors exist. It saves you having 10 huge boards in a machine. And um, like a PDP, you know, that was a, a discrete uh, processor and you could now replace that with a single small microprocessor. So I've got no idea, again, why this uh, comment would be made. It completely misses the goal of the project. The goal of the project is to do things the hard way using discrete logic. So yes, obviously we could do this in a simpler way using fewer devices if we went to large scale, but that's specifically what I've said we're trying to avoid. It goes on to kind of expand on this and uh, saying you'll need to roll your own if you're doing something unusual. Well, again, completely missed the point of the video series. We are specifically trying to do things using discrete logic, largely so that I can explain the process of development, but also so that I can more clearly explain the inner workings of the large scale devices, such as the WD1402 UART, we are explaining how they work internally. So saying we could replace discrete logic with a large scale device when the entire project is about how to do things using discrete logic rather than large scale devices is kind of, yeah. like I said, it's missed the point uh, of the video series. So next uh, point, um, the WD1402 was the first LSI chip to make money for its maker. I'm not sure that's true, but I don't see what relevance that has whatsoever in our project. Every computer needed one or more serial ports. Note they didn't. Um, very many of the Z80s I worked on did not have RS232 ports at all. And he's talking here in 1971, well the Z80 didn't even come out until 1976. So again, I think he's got his, um, his eras mixed up here. Um, but either way, that is a completely incorrect statement. And I'm not trying to pick on anyone, I'm trying to get across to anyone that's not familiar with this period of computer development. Things were moving very quickly and things changed a great deal. And what I'm really trying to get across is that the Z80 and processors like it were game changers in as much as they completely did away with the very things he's pointing out we're not including and that's because they were no longer required when things like the Z80 came along. So again, uh, if you're not familiar with this era of computer development, um, trying to fall into this trap, the Z80 um, in the 1980s computer systems really started to change. Um, it, I think he's talking here about the WD-1402. It predated the mass market availability of most MSI counters and shift registers like the ones we're using. I'm not sure what relevance that has whatsoever. Um, so the competition was still built of SSI blocks and discretes. Wrong. 
absolutely incorrect. Some larger uh, machines were built using SSI blocks. You see some of my previous videos on that. Um, but the vast majority, if not all, Z80 small computers built in the 1980s used TTL logic or the LSI devices that were brought out to support the Z80 and similar processors. So this is completely incorrect and again I think that uh, is he's either talking about a completely different type of computer uh, or a completely different era and it has nothing to do with our project. Then on to the final point he makes, um, he understands the uh, teaching value of uh, building from scratch and uh, trying to explain the way they operate so uh, he gives me permission to carry on. Well, thanks for the permission to continue and um, uh, I will uh, do so. But um, if it's understood why I'm going through the discrete process to develop these circuits, I don't understand what the entire rest of the comments uh, was really aimed at. So, like I said, I'm not trying to pick on anyone, but if um, you kind of dropped into this uh, project halfway through, it's not about building a specific um, type of computer. I'm not trying to mimic a computer. I'm not trying to build a computer that um, would have been put into use back in the uh, 1980s, although chances are it could have been. And I'm certainly not trying to build a computer to support um, devices back in the 19s, uh, early 1970s or 1960s. Um, this comment is, uh, is completely missing the purpose of this project. So I'm hoping that's kind of clarified things a little bit. We're trying to go through the process of designing a computer, breaking it down into steps, breaking it down into uh, sub-assemblies and modules, so that you can decide, for example, with the RS232 module, you can decide how much of this, if any, you want to incorporate. But you can do it in such a way that you don't need to kind of look at the computer as a, an entire entity. You can look at each small section of it um, separately, and then you can design it however you want. So when we look at the module I presented in the previous video, this is not reliant on the rest of the machine. This is something you can you could unplug this, design a complete drop-in replacement, drop that into your design and add to it whatever features you want. That's kind of what I'm trying to get across. It's the inner workings of this so that if you want to build your own it makes it clearer if you're not already familiar with that. Um, but more specifically how you can isolate the development of certain sub-assemblies within a much more complex, larger system. Design it the way you want, modify it, end up with something specific to your requirement. And again, not it doesn't need to be an all singing, all dancing, supports every user in the world type of design. It can be something that's very specific to your requirement, or it can be something that's as advanced as you want, or you can develop on top of it and that's what I'm trying to get across it's you know the idea of this is to have some fun doing this design it from scratch don't get bogged down with the naysayers and the people who say no you're doing it wrong there's always going to be uh, comments like this to tell you you're doing it wrong um, but don't be concerned if uh, it, you know it could take you a long time to build one of these you might never get it finished I've started many projects uh, in the past, especially when I was just starting out in electronics, that never got finished. But they were a lot of fun working uh, on them and learning from them. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve with this project, is to get across that you don't need to look at a computer design as an entire design all in one step. You can do it bit by bit. And I'm hoping as I go through this project that introducing each element of one piece at a time showing the inner workings is helping anyone that hasn't done this sort of thing before but would like to give it a try. Uh, certainly if you are going to comment, comments are welcome, but if you're going to comment please keep them relevant and on topic and uh, it would probably be a good idea to at least watch the first video of the series. I'll go through the, the purpose of the uh, series 
and uh, if not what I can do in future is point people towards this video and hopefully it will explain what the series is all about.